I pulled out of the bank, went in, you know, about the same kind of thing, had the sight line broke up, pulled out of the bank and took off. And I was going to go up the road, take a left and take another left and get on the highway. So I go up here and I take a left and I see this car behind me. I'm like, okay. So I go up a little bit farther and I turn again and the car turns again as well. Mm, so that's bad. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on him for just another second. And then I'm, I, then I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> so I pull across the road instead of turning right. And as I pulled across the road, he came behind me and that's, oh shit, what am I going to do? We knew about what die packs look like. They're they're a little bit thicker, and they're heavier than a regular stack of money. So I knew kind of how to identify them, but mostly I just wanted to see if I could do it. I think at that point, um, so went in there, vaulted the counter, had him fill the bag up, got out. That's that. When you said tunnel vision, that was really about the best way to describe it. Um, when you start going in there, that's your sole mission and. In my mind, you've got to get away. Yeah, yeah. So if there's a pile of shrubs or whatever out there, you're going through that shit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're going through, over, under. Yeah. No matter, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no matter what. Uh, and I've also come to the conclusion that fear will outrun anger. Yeah. If somebody's mad at you and they're chasing you and you're scared of them, you're probably going to run faster than they are because you're going to get that adrenaline going. So, well, when you go in the bank, I mean, like, like the it's just a bunch of tellers. Like, they immediately just go in the drawers and just start handing over the money right away. Like that, nobody puts up a fight, nobody says anything, nobody just runs, nothing. They just they kind of stand know. there in shock. Oh, they okay. stand there in shock for a second. So you kind of have to prod them along. Um, you know, tell yeah. them do it now. You know, right. put it in here. So because they'll just stand there in shock yeah. until you. God, and they're basically. trained. I mean, they're like they they're they're trained mm -hmm. to don't give the guy any trouble. Just give him the yep. money immediately. It's not your money. Give it to him. Get right. him out of the bank. Like they wanted to get you out of the bank before something happens to us, customer yes. or right. And that was one of the things that I found out from that friend of mine who talked to his mom was that they are trained to do whatever. Um, yeah. In fact, one of the ones that I did, I carried in a, a walkie-talkie with me, and I told them, I said, "Don't hit the alarm. I got a police scanner, and I'll know if you do." All right. I didn't know it until later after I got arrested and everything. When I looked at the paperwork, I found out that they did not hit the alarm. Right. They waited until I left and called 911. So if I would have gotten to do any more, if I would have had that knowledge, I would have seen if I could make them cluck like a chicken or something. Right. You know, <laughs> just so, something off the wall just to see. <laughs> so, um, so you got the money and mm -hmm. you're out of the bank. Out of the bank. We take off. We'd found a, a route that would get us quickly to another town. And her friend worked as a bartender in Applebee's. So we said, we'll get there as quick as we can. Right. And then she'll swear we were there the whole time at Applebee's right, hanging right, right. out. So we did that and uh, went and had a couple of drinks just for appearances. And then we went back out to the car and started looking at everything. Um, you what, know, what year was this in? 1995, November of 95. Okay, because there's no, it's not like there's cameras on every, like right now there's cameras just everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, they, um, they can walk around, they can do a small perimeter and find somewhere where they've got your tag number. Somebody, yep. some yeah. some business, someplace has a tag number, yep. something. Yeah, but back then we didn't have to worry about that. You know, yeah. they, they weren't even, they weren't even on the outside of the banks. Um, so I had her pull right up to the front and drop me off at the door. Um, so we got home and we went through the money and we had $5,000. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They, I heard that like the average bank robber gets thirty five hundred bucks. Like that's the average or something like that. It's not very high. No, it, I mean and that was that was. I heard that by the way. I heard that before I even went to prison. I don't know right. if it's higher now, but five grand. Yeah, got five grand. I was mad as hell. Not gonna lie, I'm like, man, we just robbed a bank. We got five thousand dollars. Yeah, you're looking at like with a gun, with a gun because it doesn't matter that it's a pellet gun. At that time, gun. it did. Oh, it did? Yeah, the oh, law okay. had changed since then. So Because in like seven years, like minimum, you're getting set like just seven Just for years. a gun, yeah. yeah. Um, back at that time, it was just counted, I think, as a weapon. Okay. But it wasn't considered a firearm because it has to be propelled by an explosion. Right. So, yeah, we're, we're mad as hell. You know, we got $5,000. That goes pretty quick in any kind of world. And if you're yeah. partying, it goes even quicker. Yeah. So a month, to the day, a month. December 7th, 1995, um, we found another bank we were going to do. And well, this, your, your girl's down. She like, is. She's down for she anything, was, bro. That's. Yep. yep. She was. 
Because she's robbing the bank. You know, she she's was, she's oh, yeah. probably thinking, no, no, I'm just driving the car. No. No. You're getting charged with bank yep. robber. Conspiracy yep. to rob a bank. The way they've got it turned is a hand in one is a hand in all. Yeah. So if you have anything to do with it, you're all the way in. But yeah, she was she was as dumb as I was. So <laughs> um, so we ran through that party and, you know, just that's not an exciting story at all. So we found a second one and we went to do it and it was set up a little bit differently. So there was a big parking lot for a grocery store and a couple of little stores beside it. And there was a couple of trees over there. So she was going to go park in the parking lot and I was going to hit the bank and then go over to the parking lot and get in the car. Um, went into this bank same way. Um, I think I, I had a little bit of super villain in me and wanted to be notorious. So I wore the same devil's mask as I did in the first one. Nice. Um, <laughs> So yeah, make sure there's a link. There. <laughs> right, you got to do that because it I'm, does seem it does seem cool to have a theme. You know, it does. You it know, does. I, I wanted to be the Joker or in something. In the movie, so. it seems yeah. in the movie version, it's yeah. cool. But in reality, it's like eh, I really want to do this vastly different. So right, they catch me for one, they got me for one. Yeah, yeah. So, but like I get it. I'd have done the same fucking thing. Yeah, you know. So did that. Went in. Um, did the same exact way. Had you know the mask, hoodie, gloves. Had the BB gun, vaulted the counter like I did before, and jumped over the counter and told them to fill the bags up. They filled the suitcase or the pillowcase up, and I thought about that five thousand dollars, and I said, "This ain't right. Where's where's the big money? Where's right. where's the other money?" Well, as it turns out, the the they got a top drawer which is the till, like you'd have at a grocery store or something. Yeah, there's a drawer underneath it that's got all the banded money where they can refill their drawer. So. I was like, yeah, put all that in here too. So they put all that in there. I take off out of there and there was, as I run out the back door of the bank and go this way, I ran by the drive-thru and there was a woman in the drive-thru sitting there gawking at me. So I ran up to her car and I tapped on the window and I was like, you gotta go. And she just looked at me and I said, go. And she beat feet out of there. I still don't know to this day if that's, the the person that followed us but somebody followed us from the bank um went back to a friend of mine's house that i was staying with at the time dropped my car off and got her car switched everything over went to her house to do all the counting of the money so we get back there and i took all the money into the bedroom and was sitting there starting to go through it and count it had pencil and paper, so I write everything. Now I'm all excited, you know. Yeah, this is going to be a lot better than five thousand yeah. dollars, you know, and all that. I get started with it. It's this great big pile in the bed, and I'm all happy and whatnot. And she comes walking in there, and she's like, "Hey, baby, there's a cop car outside." Ooh. I was like, "Just one?" She said, "Yeah." Oh, I no. said, "Okay, well, if it's just one, that's fine." And she said, "Uh, now there's two. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> you know." So. Well, sweetie, you're going to have to take this money and go out there and just admit <laughs> what you did. <laughs> yep. So, of course, being the... I'm going to put money on your books. <laughs> I'll stay out here. I'll and, stay out here and take care yes, of you. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So, we said, you know, we're just sitting there stunned for a moment. And her sister lived next door to us. It was family land and all that. So, we get a phone call and it's her sister. And she's like... There's people from the FBI over here saying that y'all robbed a bank and need to come outside. Oh, shit. Which I already knew once once we knew there was two cops out there. That's I it's know, over. but you have to you have to admit, like even when things were going wrong in my case, there was still this little part in me that said it's a coincidence. It's not. They're not going to figure it out. It's not like it's it, up right up until you hear the voice and they say it. It's like then it's just like this just makes it real. It's so real. It's yeah. like suddenly it's like, so oh, real. There's just there, at least before there was a one percent chance. Now yeah, no that sliver. Chance. Hey, if you guys didn't know, I also do. I do paintings, and uh, if you're interested in a painting, I'm gonna leave my contact information in the description beneath the video. Back to the video. Well, my philosophy when I plan these things was always that if I can get away from the bank, you'll be all right. I'll be fine. Yeah, but now you've got this money with bands on it and. Yeah, but that wouldn't. That didn't mess us up. I mean, oh, okay. There was. I would think that I, the bands could be tracked back to that bank or something. Like, I, mean, I would think something. I would be concerned. Like, well, we got caught on that one. So, yeah, so, yeah, 
No, no, that's what I mean. I'm yeah. saying like if you're, I, I thought you were trying to say that I figured even if they caught me when I was away from the bank, I could still say that wasn't right. me. But but not if they've got the bands the on bands the money. And all, yeah, no, I'm still thinking I, you're I, still I got what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Um, so you they know, ask you to politely come out. They ask us to politely come out. I go and look out the window, and by that time, there's like 10, 12 cop cars out there, and they're all behind their cars with guns out because they think we got a gun because I had a BB gun. Yeah. So they think we're armed and dangerous. And that's when I decided I wasn't ready to die yet. I wasn't going to run out there and hail of bullets because yeah, yeah. that was my idea. I was, fuck it, I'm not going to let them take me alive. Um, yeah, that's that's a bunch of macho bullshit. So <laughs> the, what was it, Sundance? Uh, what's the name of the Sundance kid? Butch Cassidy, Butch Cassidy and the and Sundance Sun- kid. Yeah. Yep. It sounds, it's beautiful. It's a, it's very romantic. It is. No. Yeah. Only if you get to leave the theater afterwards. <laughs> that definitely helps. So we sit there for maybe three or four minutes and like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, stupidly, we hide the, hide the money and mask and everything under the bed. And they'll never, find <laughs> they'll it. never find it there. Right. This is here when we got here, we've you know, been set up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so we, we go out and surrender, you know, and that was really all we could do. Um, they charged us with two banks. Um, I got 63 months, I guess. So five years got into the federal system in 96 and it was a completely different federal system back then too. They were, they were kind of phasing out the club fed days. Right. You know, so it was still kind of sweet, yeah, but not as sweet as it was maybe five or 10 years earlier. Um, so that was the first time, um, back in 95 and 96, um, didn't do much in there really just, you know, where'd you go? Uh, spent most of it at Butner up in North Carolina. Um, I signed up just to kind of break my time up to go to the drug program. And they sent me to Lexington, Kentucky for that. Was that RDAP? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was, I'm not even sure if they called it RDAP back then, but it was something. Okay. It was, it was an intensive residential drug program. All right. So I went up there, didn't like it purposefully pretty much flunked out just right. messed with the dts's enough to where like yeah get out of here so i went back to butner and finished it up there um got out met a girl got married um bought a house was doing great everything's fantastic um for about seven years and i think it was that that memory of prison that kept me on the straight and narrow for a little while try to build something and then one day about 2007 i was just like this isn't what i want I'm leaving. Left her, um, gave her the house, said I'm I'm out. So I went off, and that started a whole nother spate of just partying all the time, you know, jumping into this relationships, whatever. I was good for 16 years, and that's how long it stuck with me, I guess. And then I got into another situation with the girl, and what were you doing for work at this time? Like warehouse work menial general labor labor right. stuff really you know um like i said before i always had a problem with the job because i knew that they were just using me to make money for themselves and get themselves rich right. and i always thought enough of myself to think you should be the guy up there at the top that's you then you gotta then you gotta work and work your way up there you do you or really you, do or you hit the lottery yep. or you have to have a rich, rich par- family rich member parents will help or yep. but you don't have any of that then you work your way up yep you gotta work your way up but at that time, I wasn't willing to do that. Yeah. So um, I worked odd jobs here and there, tried business ventures with friends and whatnot. But I mean, when you're partying all the time, that's your yeah, yeah. That's your your mission. You're not you're doing this to be able to pay for partying. Yeah. You know. So nothing ever went anywhere. I had had good ideas and had a lot of people that supported what I was trying to do, but I didn't have the follow through and whatnot to be able to to pull it together. So yeah, I've shot myself in the foot quite a few times too. Man, I'm telling you, dude, I'm like. I'm like the world master of self-sabotage. And that's one of the things that I'm most aware of now of anything else is before I make any kind of big decision is make myself stop and think about it for a minute. Um, Do an RSA. Huh? Do an RSA. Do an RSA. I can't even remember what it stands for. What is it? Rational Rational self-analysis. Rational self-analysis. I remember doing those damn things all the time. Good Lord. But but that's what a lot of people need. They just need, yeah, yeah. you have to stop for a minute well, because and think normal, about what you're doing. Normal people do that. Like nor, like they don't necessarily need it. You know, fuck ups need that. Like right. I need that because right. I'll take the shortest route 
And but like a normal guy who's lived a good life and has and his thought processes are normal, he just naturally does it. So yeah. he doesn't understand how you came to your your you know analysis of the situation. Mm-mm. You know, because you immediately snap, or I snap, or I immediately say the first thing. Where these guys are, are a normal person. It's like, well, I want, I'm going to say this, but if I say this, this will happen, and that'll happen, and this will happen. But if I do this, then this is that, and that's what I want to happen. So I'm going to do this. Yeah, I don't do that. My, you know, well, I do now, but normally it's, fuck it, let's let's fake it, let's change this, let's fix yep. this, let's do this. Call so and so. I'll verify the employment. Like I immediately go fraud. I immediately think this is the easiest, quickest way to get yep. what I want, and it's guaranteed. Yeah. Even though it's not. No. I think it is. Yeah. But it's the it, same it's thing. Like the way it works in your head. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I always said to some of my guys in RDAP and stuff was if you worked as hard at trying to do something legitimate as you did at trying to do dirty shit, yeah. <laughs> then you'd probably be successful at it because you work very hard at being yeah. a criminal. And you keep it. Yeah, and you get to keep it. Nobody you, gets to come you, along yeah, and take it. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You don't have to go to prison. You don't have to disappoint your family. None of that stuff. So... Um, so you, Not all of that 16 years was a struggle. There was some of it that was good. Yeah. But I still had this mindset of just, I, I really don't know how to explain it other than just being a negative, angry person. You know, every little thing that would come my way that didn't go my way, it was terrible. And it would spiral into just being a miserable thing. And I had this one girlfriend that I had after I, after I left my wife. We were together for about a year. And on our final big breakup, um, she just kept taunting me. She was trying to get me to hit her. Right. And she said, you know what you're going to do? You're going to die miserable and alone and unhappy. And man, that shit hit me. You know, I was like, damn, you're not happy. You're, yeah. you're almost never happy. Something can always be better. You always find something wrong with shit. So that was one of the big things that I worked on, you know, in the second time. And I finally got it turned around. But yeah, a lot of people just, like I said before, you know, there's two different kinds of people. There's people who don't understand Okay, why don't you understand that hard work pays off? I just don't think that way. We don't think the same. Yeah. So I trudged along and, and, and managed to survive, but that's really all I was doing was surviving. Um, being a taker, like I said before, you know, just just um, reaping the reaping the benefits of, of what my people who love me had done and borrowing money and staying at couches and everything else. Um, just being a user and a taker. Hey, I wanted to let you guys know that I have a Patreon account. If you're interested in joining the Patreon account, it's got three tiers. The top tier, you actually get a different con man painting every single month. If you're already joined and you're already supporting me, I really appreciate that. If you haven't joined yet and you're interested in joining, I'm going to leave the contact information for Patreon in the description. Thank you very much for watching the video. Back to the video. So... I was living at my parents' house because they've got an RV and we're gone. And I met this girl and ended up moving her in with me and a couple of kids. And we ended up having a child. And that's when everything really changed for me in a couple of ways. Because in the first way that it changed me was it made me want to be this good person. But I never wanted that much responsibility in my life as having a child. So it kind of drove me a little bit insane at the same time. And her and I fought constantly. We were together for five and a half years. And out of all that time, we probably actually lived together maybe a year and a half, two years. The rest of the time, we fought so much that I couldn't stay there. Right. Or we'd just fight all the time. Um, had all kinds of arguments just constantly. The pressure of being a dad, couldn't find a regular good job because I couldn't stop drinking long enough to be able. You know, right. I think the last year that I was out, I, I went through four jobs. Because I'd show up drunk. So, and they'd yeah, fire they, me. They don't like that. No, they tend not to. Yeah. So, I was at a point where I, I didn't want to live anymore. You know, um, like we were talking about before, I, I told one of my best friends when I was 30 that if my next 30 was going to be like the first, I didn't want to live them. I was just that miserable of a person inside and everything. So, at 45, in the situation I was in, I was, I was pretty much ready to kill myself. Um, I was just that low. Right. But I had this daughter, my only child. And how can I do that to her? You know, um, so in my mind, I think I had to do something to dramatically change the course of my life. Um, suicide wasn't going to be it. Didn't have any money. Screw it. I'm going to rob banks again. Um, threatened her with that a few times. 
And then I finally made good on it. I was like, you know, couldn't work, couldn't stop drinking, couldn't do any of that. Screw it. I'm going to go back to what I know. I did it back in 95, so I've learned lessons from it. <laughs> right. Maybe I'll be better at it this time. <laughs> so um, started looking for banks. Found a, The first one I found was in my hometown, and the layout was really good. I was doing it by myself. I didn't have a driver this time, so you know I made sure I did things like parked far enough away from the bank that cameras wouldn't see my car. But you could still get to it. But I could still yeah. get to it. And there was some kind of sight line, something breaking up the sight line. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like, so I get to the other side of something and then go away. Yeah. So the, so the tellers don't run outside and say he was in a blue Ford. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. No tags, no cameras, no nothing. Just far enough away to where I could get to it quickly. Because what I always figured when I was doing them was a minute, a minute or less. Door, right. door to door from the time I laid my door to the time I get back. And that's about what it takes. Yeah. Um, so I parked on another street and I remember when I was running to the bank, um, didn't have my mask on yet cause I wasn't close enough and I just stopped and I stood there for a minute. I was like, Justin, are you really going to do this? I was like, you're fucking a right. I am. And ran in there. Didn't use a gun this time. Um, didn't use anything. Still had a mask on, hoodie, gloves, all that. I think I took a grocery bag because I didn't really care. Um, but having learned from the last one, I just went in there. I said, well, you don't have to say much when you go in with a mask and gloves in a bank. <laughs> they kind of know what's already going on. So, um, But I'd go up with the bags, and I would hand each of the tellers a bag. All these are small banks. I never want anything because yeah. you, know, you don't want to have eight tellers that you got to manage with one person. So I went in, I handed them bags. I said, fill them up with money. I want the bottom drawers and the top drawers both. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah. Not just getting those top drawers again. Um, did that and said, don't give me any dye packs and don't give me any tracers. Right. And at that point, they're still standing there looking at you kind of blank. So I was like, do it now. And that'd get them moving. So while they're filling the bags up, I do a loop around, you know, just spin around in the bank to make sure nobody else is making any kind of moves or anything. Right. And I take off and, you know, seconds later, I'm sprinting back to my car as hard as I can go, jump in the car, take off and go pass a cop on the way. Right. <laughs> he keeps on going. I keep on going like, okay, no, I'm good. I mean, no, like even though you didn't have a gun and you didn't make a threat, you didn't anything. They, they just handed over the money. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's what they're trying to do. No, I, I, I mean, I know guys yeah. who have robbed them with bank. I mean, robbed people are with a, a note. Um, but I also knew a, a guy who he said, he said, I, I have a, I have a weapon, give me the money. And the, the woman said, let me see the weapon. And he's so he wow. the weapon, and she's like, All right, fuck. And she was just, you know, she's a veteran. Yeah. She's, she's, <laughs> she's been, ro been robbed, she's been robbed before. Maybe she, many times. Yeah. She yeah. was kind of like, let me see the weapon, you know, cause he's yeah. got no math. And he's like, Hey, give wow. me all the money and the thing. And she goes, let me see. The, and he goes, I got a weapon. She goes, let me see it. And he's like, Oh, okay. You're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> she's got bigger balls than half the oh. convicts. I know. Oh, no, <laughs> um, so, and so you, you, you're gone. Got out of there. Um, called her and was like, meet me at this certain spot, handed her a band with $2,000. And she's like, Oh my God. I didn't think you were really going to do it. I was like, yeah, I, I did. Yeah. So ran around doing what I do, you know, partying, doing all that for a while. I think we got 17, 18,000 out of that one. Um, that, that other one where we got busted on before back in the nineties. Oh, yeah. How much was that? Um, 22. Okay. 22 and some change. So figured out that was the trick. So yeah, yeah. that was half of my logic going into this with a foggy drunk brain is, oh, you can do it better this time. You know what yeah, you're yeah. doing. So you're a professional now. I'm a professional now. Yeah. So did that, got away, fine, scot free. Um, you know how money is. If it's easy to come, it's easy to go. Yeah, yeah. So that shit went quick. Yeah. Um, so about another month later, um, ironically, I went and hit the bank that I hit the very first time. Because it still had those three fences around it. It still had the same setup. So this time, because I didn't have a driver, I just pulled into the residential area behind the bank. It's middle of the day. Everybody's at work. I just pulled in somebody's driveway, and there was a big enough hole in the 
in the privacy fence that I could squeeze through it. And I already scoped it out. So busted in there, went in, no gun, no note. I didn't want to leave anything behind. Right. I didn't need a note. And like I said, when you got a mask and everything, they know what it is. So went in that one, did it, went just fine. Um, got away 20000 or so off of that one. Nice. So that was about average, 20 to 22, 23. Um, ended up doing four before I got before I got caught got caught on the fourth one. Um, how did that how did that happen? Somebody uh, followed you or Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. And I heard about it from a guy in jail actually. Well, I knew kind of what went on, but it was it was funny the way it happened. I pulled out of the bank, went in, you know, about the same kind of thing, had the sight line broke up. Pulled out of the bank and took off and I was going to go up the road, take a left and take another left and get on the highway. So I go up here and I take a left and I see this car behind me. I'm like, okay. So I go up a little bit farther and I turn again and the car turns again as well. Mm, so that's bad. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep an eye on him for just another second and then I'm, I, then I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> so I pull across the road instead of turning right. And as I pulled across the road, he came behind me and that's, Oh shit! What am I going to do? Is this you just know? a regular person, or is this mm -hmm. a police officer? Yeah, he was in a little Hyundai something or another. Wow. Came out of a pawn shop that was close by, and just happened and to see you running, or just happened to pick up on what was going on. Yep. And said, "I'm gonna follow this dude." Yep, and called nine one one. So after I got across the highway and started going down the road, I had blue lights behind me. Yeah, I knew at that point it was over. So I panicked and tried to run and crashed. And <laughs> oh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you, I, look, I just robbed a bank 45 seconds ago. Right, I'm yeah. still like, running from the I'm cops is like, the least of my problems. Argh, yeah, that's the least of my problems. So I get blue lights behind me and I stomp on it and end up crashing into a tree. 